I got plenty of water and I'm just about to uh, leave Swift current final after sitting here since Wednesday uh, June 10th so we are unloading in the same spot where I was supposed to unload except now it's almost one week later and uh, compared to the original route it's about 250 270 miles calendar I don't want calendar um, so uh, when they told me to go back to the previous to the original location I told them uh, we need to uh, talk about the compensation what is this come on keep tracking doesn't wanna doesn't wanna log in because the bluetooth didn't uh... your company requires that you review and sign all logs before before uh continuing so. okay so the route is ready so it says that uh, I'm 152 kilometers 152 kilometers or one and a half hours away from my turn which is turn on highway 2 um, but I know they want me to turn they want me to turn earlier yeah sorry for the noise you know I gotta I have to buy an air detector because I mentioned this before ever since uh, hail trailer moved my air connectors to the top in the back there when they were at the bottom right and then they moved all of them I noticed I started I started getting this in the morning like the secondary air green needle is always but it's not it's not you cannot hear it it only happens overnight so it's not a violation but I'll need to take care of it uh, a friend suggested a model of this uh, uh, a leak detector it's like 400 bucks Canadian I think or like 200 something US and we'll take care of that so that we don't have this noise and I was afraid somebody would uh, steal my fuel because you know I was thinking about this I left the truck with full tanks of fuel because right before I booked the, the hotel I was ready to leave on the next day like uh, it was uh, I wanted to go to the next truck stop right but then I realized there's no point because it was only 50 kilometers away 30 miles away like a decent truck stop so I I decided to uh, spend uh, sp spend the weekend here as I thought I was waiting for Alberta to uh, to cancel or uplift its seasonal restrictions right so today is supposed to be the first day when you, in Alberta you allowed 19,000 kgs per tandem as opposed to 17,000 kgs so you get 2,000 kgs which is 4,400 pounds more per tandem today if they did lift it because sometimes they they, uh, they say they can go a week earlier a week later so but I didn't check because now I'm not going to BC I'm not going through Alberta right I don't care about Alberta anymore so uh, yesterday I called uh, I got ready I printed out my bill of lading I made I prepared all my paperwork for today's delivery I checked my Google Maps found my route but the most important thing I called uh, Saskatchewan uh, permit office like the government permit office 
and I ask him if it's possible to modify the permit because you cannot just go wherever you want with the oversized load, right? Like my previous permit uh, through Saskatchewan was straight west on Trans Canada 1 from Manitoba line to Alberta line, right? And now I'm going back to Moose Jaw and then south on Highway 2. So uh, Trans Canada 1 east to Moose Jaw and then south on 2 and my delivery is at the bottom there. Not too far from US border actually. Um, and the gentleman on the phone was very nice and he says okay hold on let me check he confirmed that nothing changed i said yeah it's exactly the same load the load had not been moved or altered same configuration same truck i said it's pretty much the same permit uh oh and i i extended my permit right last week when i was when i thought i was going to alberta i called them and i extended the permit uh Till tomorrow till Wednesday so it's a, it's still an active permit right so which was perfect because they can modify an active permit because if it expired I probably would uh, would have to pay the full price this this way there was no fee for the actual um, uh, route change but he looked at, at, at the distance original distance versus this distance and it was uh, he charged me 80, 85 bucks Canadian. He said, would that be a, a MasterCard or Visa? I said, uh, Visa. Okay. And 10 minutes later, I had my, uh, I had my uh, permit on the email, but you don't need that. You don't actually need the paper version, as you might know. All you need, to, all you need if a cop stops you, like here in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, you just need that number the actual permit number written down somewhere so that you can show it to them and they can pull it pull it up on their computer so easy peasy all right the engine seems to be warm over 100 degrees and time now is uh 602 local time 802 eastern time so we can uh, get going so east of trans canada one from swift current to Moose Jaw and then south on Highway 2 and there's a little bypass there they are sending me around the town so I'm not going straight on Highway 2 because it goes through downtown but there's like another street another little road before Moose Jaw and then it, it, which connects with um, with uh, Highway 2 and I cannot make this turn I'm supposed to go that way but there's a post here and there's a fence so we're gonna follow this guy I'm not sure which way he's not sure which way he's going uh -huh. I think he's going this way no that way okay this slight uh, dog tracking issue and another friend suggested that's probably the um, the possible the, the most plausible possible cause is um, the neck he says when you lift your trailer from the ground notice if there's any movement you know on the trailer like when the trailer is down and I'm fully loaded and then I use my hydraulics 
to, to lift the front of the trailer. He says, notice if the front moves anywhere but vertically. And I remember that I, I did notice that a few times, you know, when you, like, everything sits straight, right? The truck, the Jeep sits straight or appear to be sitting straight. But then when you lift it, the front of the trailer just, I forgot which way, but it goes like half an inch, an inch, you know, either left or right. You know, when you lift it, instead of going like this, it goes like, you know, just very slightly. And of course, that's what can cause you know when I look in the mirror um, and I do believe like I know some guys wrote a comment saying that that's just the effect of the mirror because these two mirrors are different but you know I've been driving for thousands of kilometers and checking and I still see there's a little discrepancy because in, in front of the trailer like the front of the trailer how much how much of the front basically a ramp I see on the left and on the right and that's what I meant remember I said the guy told me there was no um, there was no entrance and this is the entrance so it's slightly off because I have to go that way right it's out of my route but I cannot make that turn and I'm not sure if we'll be able to record once I get on the freeway because the Sun is right there so I'll be I'll be driving towards the Sun until it goes above my roof and so that's it so it, now this Trans Canada one I stay here for 153 kilometers if I can start in gear but of course what causes all these issues with the neck sometimes is when you um, have a heavy load and you have to turn you know sharply and I remember when I had that pile driver that was my first and so far my my heaviest load uh, just before delivering right in in Alberta I was looking where to park for the night at least for a few hours and it was winter I only I only saw one uh, one truck stop actually it was more like a gas station right it, it only had two spots and they were both occupied, right? And so when I went in, it was so tight that I could not just enter and leave through the diesel pumps. Because again, I had the same setup, right? Jeep and the, and the booster, except it was three plus one. And it's like five in the morning. I'm dead tired. It's pitch black. There's snow everywhere and I'm stuck at the gas station two minutes away from my delivery and so I had to I had to do some drastic maneuvers to get out of there or I would destroy the the pumps you know and I remember at one point the Jeep was at like 90 degree angle to the trailer which is not good so but that's what I had to do I Otherwise, what do you do? You, you call a tow truck, you know? Yeah, that's this other ramp that I could have taken. But they're doing repairs over there. So, we don't want to go that way. And that's the ramp. 
Now look at this guy. So double drive-in trailers, right? So I don't know why it's such a big deal. Why do we? Why do I even need a permit, right? Like I have a Jeep and the Stinger or Booster. Actually, I like the word Stinger myself. But when when I was talking to these um, uh, permit agencies here, they were very confused by the word Stinger. Like to me, Stinger sounds you know sexier, but it's the same thing right it's just it's a piece of metal a frame that separates your axles so that you get more weight as per the bridge formula and so i told them i had i had a stinger and they said uh, what do you have a car trailer so somehow they were associating that the word stinger with uh, uh, with guys that hold cars I guess they call that a stinger you know where there's a truck with a trailer I don't know anyway I said no not not cars I said heavy hole uh, and she says booster I said yeah booster and so after that I started using the word booster but so the these terms they're all interchangeable and so we're passing swift current this is the shopping center. This is where I went on my truck to get coffee. And uh, this big plaza there. And on this side, they have a bunch of... Uh, there's another shopping center here. Uh, with a... Like a bit further down with a Walmart. And... I spent three nights... Uh, Holiday Inn. I don't know if we passed it already or not. Oh yeah, yeah, there's a casino over here which is still closed, and that's the Holiday Inn, right? Right in front of that uh, big antenna, that gray building. That's where I was, and it's a good area because you can walk uh, past this casino. Uh, there's a pharmacy. I didn't go in there, but there's a Boston Pizza over there. That's where I, I was talking about my first meal. And then further down, there's Walmart. That's where I bought that. Um, I bought a little toaster oven, and I took it to my hotel, and I was able to grill some salmon. I grilled some salmon and. Um, I had some potatoes, I got some sweet potatoes, some real red skin potatoes, and uh, that toaster oven, it's, it's like super small, like I don't know, one and a half feet long, maybe even less, very nice.
Yeah, Doug, hi, it's uh, Sergey, the guy with the track, how are you? No bad. Hey, listen, I, I went around, I uh, seen a boy here on the, you know, where the signs are for trucks, so you, you know, towards Highway 2, and I'm pretty much... Okay, so basically I'm at this uh, Sina Boya Avenue and uh, cannot don't see, but it, where where the pavement ends and it says trucks go straight and I see it's the dirt road and it signs it says signs to Highway Two, so if I go straight I will end up on Highway Two eventually, and yeah and then I turn left on this uh, sorry what's the name of that a road seventy two. 74, sorry, okay, and then I just go basically towards that uh, golf course, right? Uh, well, I only see one more road here that uh, crosses the 74, right? You want me to go right on that one? Oh, so basically your side is what it's it's close to 74 I can see it from when I'm on 74 okay how far are you approximately from highway 2 three miles okay five kilometers all right so then I'm 74 I'll be looking for that uh, road 74 and yeah I'm in a black track so uh, yeah, I'm basically, I'm like five kilometers away, like three miles, I don't know. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye. Yeah, I stopped here at the very end of this Asina Boya because it looks like, uh, of course, this is uh, where I'm going. It's a wind farm, so it's not inside the, <laughs> this little town. But you saw like what sometimes happens when you drive a truck. Like when I talked to this guy yesterday, he says, yeah, just go on Highway 2. I said, so you want me to go through Asina Boy on Highway 2? He says, yeah. And then I, I come to, this is like Highway 13 and 2, and then at one point it says, Highway 2, turn right. And of course, you, there's a huge sign that says, no trucks. And I stop there, as you saw, and I kind of look over there, and it looks like it's, they call it Center Avenue. And that's pretty much downtown, because you see stores and coffee shops, you know, like on both sides, so... I thought maybe I should take a risk, but I see the other guy coming from the opposite direction like a truck, so there's no way I'm gonna, you know, go through downtown with this huge track, and so... But finally, see, I was looking for a bypass, like there's nowhere to go, so I was just going this way, and then I saw a sign that says, to Highway 2, go this way. And uh, that's where we're going, where this guy is coming from. And it's all dirt road. And that's why I just wanted to verify, so so I called the guy, my contact, and he says, yeah, you, you, probably, you probably heard him. He says, yeah, just go south, you'll see, uh, what did he say, 74, but I forgot, Route 74, something 74, and then he says, we're three miles, you'll see us from this 74, you have to turn on some kind of a dirt road. But another good sign is that I saw... I saw a truck with the freight broker name because the broker who gave me this load they also have a trucking company and I saw their trucks uh, loading there and so all right we gotta go because I see these guys get concerned over here some kind of a construction company and they're looking at me like thinking this guy coming here? No, boys and girls, I'm not coming there. So I'm going to. So basically, my my landmark was, or kind of like a marker was. Uh, So we're about 2,870 miles 
from uh, from Halifax. Actually, it's shorter, but because I had to, I had to go like this and then come back. If I didn't have to come back, it would be 2,600 miles. And so basically, this is it. They're building, they're building uh, wind generators. So this is going to be the first one. The second one is straight there, where all the uh, spikes are. And I basically went like this, and something's really happening with the with the trailer. Once I went on the gravel road, it started dog tracking like crazy. So I'm still trying to figure out if it's just the trailer, is it the booster, is it my neck? I have no idea. But right now, see these are parts for the same same crane. I, I first uh, I took the Jeep off and I parked the Jeep I went back asked him to uh, flip my neck and then I hooked back to the trailer and dragged the neck away so that they have room in the front in case this thing decides to uh, to shift forward because the front is heavy uh, hey guys you wanna you might want to put the support for the track I said it's fine. Where do you want me to park the Jeep? I said, you want me to park over there? And the guy says, no, don't park over there. He says, that's where, that's where this whole track is going. And you see this? How massive everything is, right? This is the hook. All right, now we got the ignition. Well, please don't drop it on my trailer. I have enough problems as it is. That's it, so now I just have to hook up back. Oh, and they're gonna load the Jeep and then uh, hide the chains. And yeah, I really need to, I really wanna find some, a place where I can do my alignment, you know, because something is going on with this. Four, four, 44.9 metric tons boys and girls 99.9 thousand pounds pretty much 100,000 pounds Check this out. At least it's not too cold, not too hot. So perfect for working, but the sky looks a bit scary. I don't know, is it gonna like a 
almost like a thunderstorm is coming or some severe rain but definitely not snow and that's how I came in I came in on this gravel road and uh, went around and now basically you guys already saw how we loading the Jeep so I'm not gonna show you that but uh, maybe I'll show you some driving when I'm empty we're gonna check if the trailer dock tracks when I'm empty because first I have to take the shims out I'm gonna leave two shims I'm gonna take one out because if I take all the shims out from the booster the rear axles will have zero weight and the airbags will be you know like I don't know, two feet tall straining the chain ready to burst so I need to undo those bolts take one shim out and then we should be good so didn't decide yet what to do but uh, looking for the check the load board yesterday I uh, saw some activity but um, nothing in in the immediate vicinity here so all the track stops are either one hour north in Moose Jaw or two hours northeast to Regina and actually Regina is where I was told there's a couple of uh, alignment shops that can do trailer alignment uh, so I haven't decided at which where I'm gonna sleep Moose Jaw or Regina we'll see later I made it to uh, Moose Jaw it was tricky coming south from uh, this Asina Boya you have to go around and this is a petrol pass I cannot fill up here because I don't have the card but lots of parking I was able to park like this beautiful and the restaurant is open so I just had my first and last uh, meal of the day had some uh, baked potatoes and uh, and some kind of meat it was very nice over there we have a flying J see that uh, there's a white uh, pita built with a single axle Jeep not a big fan of those because you know the what what many people don't realize is that when you have a single axle Jeep you don't have this you don't have this drop right on a single axle Jeep it's a pretty much straight line and so you see like here right so the fifth wheel is pretty much at the same height as like you don't lose anything but if you use a single axle Jeep you become taller at least like six inches or something because again your fifth wheel is your trailer sits on top of a single axle jeep right and i'm super dirty because it was raining just like i thought it would that ugly sky so we flipped the neck right i went with the second position this time for the kingpin yeah like the uh, longer one i didn't want to mess with the fifth wheel moving the fifth wheel again and that's my new rubber we're gonna use this uh, for excavators and the crane loaded the jeep everything was cool i got four chains on it and uh it was still really like dog tracking like i'm telling you something's happening and this is the axle right this is the axle that was hit um during that accident and so the direction was like this and and when i'm uh, when i'm driving actually i have a feeling that this axle tries to go this way um, because i see i can see that the rear of the trailer is this way and then the jeep the the booster tries to correct and also i notice this a very uneven wear on the inside and i know i checked all the tire pressures everything was good everything was 125 it's clearly you know this is not good so so this tire is not gonna last very long and so something like that might happen when you know when the tires go sideways right see like this one is good but this one really bad it has all these hills and valleys over here very very bad so maybe when the guy hit this wheel and he broke the wheel 
maybe he pushed that wheel somehow and it but anyway i i checked everything i checked those hangers uh, the actual body unless there's the unless the axle itself is bent but hold on i did not check for that well oh, actually i cannot see that unless i go in here but you know it's a massive i'm guessing what five inch thick axle to bend that one on a 60 ton trailer i would think you need uh like that guy was going maybe 30 kilometers an hour i was doing maybe 30 so we're doing 60 combined which is what 40 miles an hour and he hit me in the wheel i think for a 60 ton trailer that's nothing anyway found the shop uh, going tomorrow to uh, Regina uh, one hour to the east because I really want to fix this before I book another load and plus there's no loads here anyway it's all fields and uh, in the middle of nowhere so all the loads would be either I'm guessing either in Alberta or in the States in US and so um, I submitted all my paperwork and I should be paid uh, tomorrow uh, the freight broker has an option of a quick pay and so I'm going for I'm going for that one just like last time and so I should have money tomorrow and then the appointment is booked for 8 o'clock I'll be 8 o'clock I'll be in Regina uh, near that industrial park they have quite a few truck shops, repair shops. The only thing is, the guy says, yeah, we can do trailer alarm at your... I said, uh, will the booster be in the way? And he says, well, how long are you? I said, oh, I'm not sure. It's a tandem trailer with a 14-foot with a booster. But I said, I can back. I said, I have these arms that I can put down to block, and then I can back. But he says, yeah, it's a bit tight in here. So it's going to be interesting. But he says, if you have something broken, because I told him, I said, that was in an accident, right? Uh, in May uh, in New Jersey. He says, if you have anything broken, like hangers or bent axle, he says, uh, we cannot fix it here. We only do alignment. I said, okay, but if it's out of alignment, you can fix it, right? If the axle just needs alignment, he says, yes. And also, I'm going to ask him to look at the truck because I was doing I was doing research here on this sheet right that I, I got from Bass Tire if you remember I went there they charged me like 200 bucks and said everything was fine and uh, but then I was looking at this at this uh, thrust thrust angle on reaxle 1 and thrust angle on reaxle 2 you see it's positive and I was reading somewhere they say that if it's positive so 0 0.04 and 0 0.07 that can mean that the rear of the truck goes goes to the right I think but anyway so it can go like this and that's why my steering wheel is turned to the right even though the truck goes straight so that's what they call dog tracking right so basically we're gonna get to the bottom of this boys and girls I'm not going home unless I have all the answers or rather I'm not booking another load until I have the uh, until I have the answers so uh, that's the body Vladimir uh, he's the guy who remember when I had that scraper truck he was filming me near Regina and then I included uh, I said thank you Vladimir so he's pulling a reefer works for a company out of uh, I forgot either Saskatchewan or Al Alberta nice uh, looks like brand new uh, freight liner and he stopped by yesterday he wanted to take some pictures and he, he said he was uh, doing deliveries in Regina so so he stopped yesterday in um, in Swift Current which is west of here and we chatted for a bit and then he kept going to Regina so I guess now he's empty or something going back cool um, 
And so yeah, we're gonna get to the bottom of this uh, why the tr why the trailer is doing this. And actually today, as I, I went on that gravel road, I got scared a bit because like with the load and then without the load and then without the jeep, it was the same. Like the trailer, I can clearly see how the trailer, the rear, the rear of the trailer tries to go this way. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Is it the booster? Maybe the booster is overcompensating. Or is it the bad alignment on the trailer? Like a friend of mine, I talked to him, he says, no, it's the neck. He says, you have a low neck. There's always a free play there. Okay, I flip the neck. I'm driving back empty without the neck. Same thing. The trailer goes like this. But what's funny is that you drive like that. For some reason, it starts doing this when I leave the stop. You know, when the truck was parked and then you start driving like for half an hour, 40 minutes, I see more tra trailer in the left mirror. I can see it's dog tracking. But then you jump on a couple of potholes and it disappears. It pretty much becomes normal. Like, I don't understand this. I talked to this other guy. He says, maybe your axle is loose. <laughs> but something's happening that at first it's clearly visible. And then after a few bumps and as you keep driving on the road, it disappears and everything becomes pretty much normal. Like, if this is alignment, why does it go back and becomes, uh, you know, normal? Like something what goes out of alignment, then it goes back into alignment. It just doesn't make sense. Maybe the booster, maybe the booster when the guy hit me. I had the booster, so he hit me. And uh, so there, he pushed into the rear of the trailer. So he might sway the boost a little bit. So maybe it just created some free play in there. But there is free, free play in there. So, And again, talk to this guy and he says uh, he has this on his trailer. But he says, in his case, the trailer is actually going this way. So he says, if he keeps his uh, tires on the white line, his trailer is over the white line. In my case, it's the opposite. If I keep the tires of the truck on the white line, the trailer tires are this way. And he says, I never saw something like this. <laughs> you know, like people always tell you. No, we never had this. Like, we've been, uh, you know, in this business for 50 years. We never saw something like this. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, what do you guys wanted to know? First thing I asked the, uh, the crane guy who was unloading me uh, when I showed up there. I said, okay, guys, I have a YouTube channel. People want to know why all these changes, right? Why were we going first? here then to British Columbia then it was cancelled and he says just stupid kind of like stupid decisions I said I said is it you or is it the broker uh, so he said no that's it's not the broker <laughs> so basically it turns out there was another possible work site in British Columbia and I guess when they realized that it was taking longer than normal for all these pieces to get here to Saskatchewan they decided maybe to go there at, you know first and because I was I got lucky because I was sitting in Swift Current waiting for my uh, Alberta uh, post thaw uh, rules to kick in but a bunch of guys went in there they sent uh, they said six trucks so six trucks I don't think they had uh, anything heavy uh, probably step decks, you know, flatbeds just with some counterweights, boom section. But six trucks went to British Columbia before they said cancel. And so I got lucky that I didn't burn fuel, I didn't pay for any permits, and I just kept sitting there. And then they said cancel. Okay, so I just turned around, and all I did was about uh, it took me like four hours because the road was pretty bad there, but it was two hours to. Uh, to uh, Moose Jaw uh, and then one hour one hour down south and so I got lucky right and um, and so yeah but those other guys are coming back and one more last thing is uh, a guy posted a comment on, on YouTube on uh, send me a message on Facebook and he says uh, he saw a possible uh, second track for this crane and he sent me a picture 
and I said, yeah, it looks like my track. So the guy had a flatbed trailer with a booster. I never saw a three-axle flatbed trailer with a booster. And then as I'm driving back empty after unloading, two trucks are coming towards me. One truck was that flatbed truck from the picture, and the other guy was another low boy trailer with a house. So the house and the track already arrived there. And here's the picture. This is what the other guy had. So a flatbed trailer, a regular truck with a tandem booster. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Bye.